All right, welcome to section two of the 2009 Methods paper. My name is Abe. We're going to be walking through this paper, or this question, question one now. So let's have a quick look at the question. It looks like this. You've got a graph, a function, f of x equals 6 root x minus x minus 5. And it's looking like this curve here, and it's not too bad. Okay, so, you know, you say, you say to yourself, okay, look, this is not a difficult looking function, it's okay, I know all the parts that make it up, good. First part, state the interval for which the graph of x is strictly decreasing. Okay, quick, what's going on? You want to find the part of the graph that's got negative gradient, right? Negative gradient? Hmm. Okay, first thing you can do is put the thing into your calculator, and you will discover, you'll discover that there's a turning point at x equals 9. Yeah? So we're pretty happy that this point here, this where it turns, is x equals 9. You should all know how to do this on your calculator. Really easy. So, so basically, you know that f dash of x equals 0 at x equals 9. And the question asks you for the interval for which the graph of x is strictly decreasing. Okay, so you know that's pretty easy, right? So the interval is x as an element of you've got some 9 and you've got some infinity action going on. Now, the bracket around 9, think carefully, is actually going to be a square bracket. It's a square bracket because it says, remember back to the definition, that for strictly decreasing, it means any point within this range, within this, uh, this, this range of numbers from 9 to infinity. If you pick any two points, if um, A is bigger than B, that means A must be smaller than B. And so it has to include 9. So yeah, that's part A right there. And if you're not happy with this square bracket, you should probably look back at the definition of strictly decreasing, strictly increasing. Awesome. Okay. Part A, negotiated. Pretty happy so far. Okay. Part B, sketch the graph of y equals absolute value of x. Not too hard, is it? Not very hard, right? So, this thing doesn't actually let me, do, let me draw on this graph. So, what I'll quickly do is draw it down here. So this is our graph. Now I'm going to make sure I copy this correctly. So it kind of goes like this, and it goes down. Right? That's what our graph looks like. So this is f of x, like so. So you look at our graph of f of x, a couple of things. One is that this endpoint here has closed circle. Use the closed circle. The other thing is that you want to look roughly, you want to sort of reflect it up roughly here. So it's going to be a tiny bit higher than the turning point here. So let's do that. You know how to draw a graph of the absolute function, right? All you do is where whatever's negative, you just turn it positive. Whatever's positive stays positive. So being the smart, clever people we are, we're going to start with a closed circle. We're going to come down here like this. There's going to be a cusp. And you sort of just follow the line. Well, sorry, my drawing's not great, but you know what it means. You follow the black line till you get to here. And then there's another cusp. And the graph goes off like that. There you go. Very simple. The graph doesn't ask, they don't ask you to label anything, and yeah, that's it. Two easy marks. You gotta be feeling good about yourself. That's four marks out of the way. On to part C. So part C, apologies, part C says, okay, what are we doing? Point A and B, points of intersection of y equals f of x with the x-axis and they've been very nice to provide point A and point B, you don't even need to find it. Now you want to find the length AD such as the area of ABCD is equal to the area of the shaded region. Another way of asking the question is what is the average value 
of f of x over 1 to 25. Or you could just say, okay, well, let's just do it geometrically. Find the area and then equate the areas. And I think that's the approach I'm going to take. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so part C. Part C. We want to do this. So you know that the area is... Oops. Wrong colour. The area is the integral from 1 to 25 because remember our our interval here is from A to B, right? A is at 1, B is 25. So the integral runs from 1 to 25. Um, your f of x, which you know from earlier part in the question, dx. And with your clever calculator, you'll see that this area is equal to 64 units. Okay, so going back here again, you see that uh, the area of ABCD needs to equal 64, right? So you just say, okay, 64 equals um, AB times BC, right? AB times BC. Now, you know what AB is? AB is, what, 24. Sorry. Whilst I was looking at the question, I was also writing. So there, AB is 24. So... B, C, or, sorry, in other words, A, D, B, C is the same as A, D. Let's just write down A, D. So A, D is also, is going to equal 64 over 24, which comes to 8 on 3. There's your answer. Look back at the question. Find the length of A, D. Yes, A, D is 8 on 3. Great. All right, C negotiated, very nice. Okay, on to part D. D goes, all right, they've given you two points on our f of x, um, P and B as shown in our little diagram, and it goes, find M, the gradient of the chord P, B. This question is worth, oh, I don't know how many marks, but whatever marks they're worth, they're free pretty much. If you don't know how to do this, you should go back to year 10. But anyway, look at the rise, look at the run, you go, this is awesome. M is rise over run. The only bit you could trip up on is that M is supposed to be negative because our line is pointing downwards. Awesome. So the rise is what? Minus three. The run is nine. Negative a third out of the way. Simple. Okay, part two. D, part two. Find A, where A is between 16 and 25, such that F dashed of A is equal M. What does that mean? All it's saying is where along this curve is the gradient of F of X equal to the gradient of this straight line. So basically, it's saying, find f dashed of a equals negative a third. That's it. So you find the derivative of the curve, and then you equate it to negative a third, and then you solve for x, except they've decided to call x a. So that's it. Really simple, right? So recall that, um, recall that f of x is, what is it, 6 root x minus x minus 5, right? So f dashed of x equals, now you know how to take derivatives, 3 over root x minus 1, yeah, 1. Okay, so now all you need to do is equate minus a third equals 3 on root x minus 1, right? So, again, reminding you, um, this part is f dashed of a, or x, sorry, I'm being a bit slack on my thing, let's just call it x, and this part here is m, 
our gradient of that line. Okay, solving, very simple. Two thirds is equal to three over root x. And then you go, okay, that's great. Root x equals nine on two. X equals 81 on four. Therefore, A equals 81 on four. Done. There it is. Part D, out of the way. Okay, onwards we go. Part E says, okay, we get to introduce a second function. It goes, let's let g of x equal x squared. Find the rule of f of g of x. Don't panic. Don't panic. Really easy. Okay, remind ourselves again, f of x is, what is it? 6 root x minus x minus 5. Apologies. There we go. I've been writing it. Okay. Now, f of g of x. What does that mean? It means replace x in f of x with g of x. Come back to the question. You'll see that g of x is equal to x squared. So just replace x with x squared. Really simple. 6 root x squared minus x squared minus 5. Hmm. What's interesting about this? root x squared. Quite interesting. Notice that root x squared does not equal that. Because when you square it, suddenly it's all positive. And so you'll actually find that the root of x squared is going to be the absolute value of x. So it's actually 6 times absolute value of x minus x squared minus 5. Yeah. So that's f of g of x. Simple, right? So that's part 1. Second part. Part 2. They're going to call h of x f of g of x. Great. Find the derivative of h of x with respect to x. Okay. Find the derivative. Okay. It's not too bad. H dashed of x equals oh, absolute value. What do you do with that? Okay, you know that the absolute value of x really equals what's it equal? It equals x when x is bigger than zero, negative x when x is smaller than zero. So maybe instead of calling that h dashed of x, maybe I could just call that h of x there. So h of x, let me write that again then as a hybrid function. So for x bigger than 0, you know that it's just 6x minus x squared minus 5. For x bigger or equal to 0. And then it's negative 6x minus x squared minus 5 for x smaller than 0. Yeah? We're happy about that. Okay, now that makes life really easy. H dash of x, well, you just differentiate both of them. 6 minus 2x for x bigger than 0. No equals. Remember, at x equals 0, there's a cusp. At the cusp, there is no gradient. H dash of x, not defined for x equals 0. Okay, the bottom part, negative 6 minus 2x x smaller than 0. Yeah, there it is. Really easy. So that's part 2 out of the way. Part 3 it says to draw free marks. You're drawing two straight lines on a graph. Granted, they have different, they have domains and ranges and stuff. Okay, so let's draw our graph. I know we're running out of space, but I like to do things all on one page. And we're almost coming to the end of the question. So let's do this. This is my graph. Great. Now, let's do x bigger than 0 first. OK, so 6 minus 2x. We're going to draw 6 minus 2x. Now, 6 minus 2x at x equals 0 is going to be 6 open circle and you write 
six. Okay. Now, when is y going to equal zero? When x equals three, right? So, you're going to go through this point is three, and you're going to do this. Draw the straight line, and it continues on. Great. Okay. Now for the bottom graph. Negative 6 minus 2x. At x equals 0, y equals negative 6. So draw your open circle, minus 6. Open circle because we have a smaller than 0, just like it was open circle because we had a bigger than 0. This function again is not defined at 0. Okay. Now, when does this equal 0? This function. The negative 6 minus 2x equals 0. At x equals minus 3. So draw this, say that's minus 3, and draw your graph. There. Easy. That's all you need for full marks. Awesome. That's question one. Next video, question two. See you there.